culture, uh, which is, I'm translating in English, but in Bengali it actually means all these different notions. It, implicit critique of many of the notions usually do not share. So that's, uh, I think, is very important to understand this movement. And when, look, I'll really focus mainly here because we have only 15 minutes, mainly on the, the way we use the sea as an organizing tool for the movement. There is, you know, 30,000, 30,000, 300,000 farming families are involved in this, you know, uh, movement. It's a fairly large movement, interesting movement in there. And then it is um, organized around many villages are called ecological villages or non fishing villages. There are many small union or the low level, uh, you know, administrative union, uh, clusters of villages, and they are also known as ecological villages. So when I see, when I want to uh, focus the sea, I brought in, I, I, I didn't think bring the picture of the present, but started with the children's faces. You can you can see in the um, to start with. I say. The children I start with. Human beings are should be considered as seed as well. It's not a simply mechanical conception of the idea of the seed. We are seed as well for the nature. And then also through this very interesting kind of entity in the nature, world also exists through human beings. I'm not trying to be anthropocentric this way, the way a kind of critic of hard in the morning, but I'm saying it's very important to understand why this agriculture should be directed also, for example, uh, you know, uh, making uh, the kids uh, involved from the beginning in the ecological um, agriculture. So, um, in terms of, is it very difficult movement to really build up in terms of uh, philosophy, in terms of, um, for example, uh, organizations, or um, in terms of knowledge practices? So, I would say, no, it is not. Why it is not? Because it, the whole movement developed on very simple ten principles, we call it. It's, you know, ten because farmers devise ten out of the ten fingers. Because the whole idea of this whole movement is this. The movement must develop on the sensuous knowledge system, a kind of knowledge practice that must be sensuous. So Bangladesh is also very, many of you are maybe will hear in the media that it's a Muslim majority country. But interestingly, it's a country very much influenced by the Buddhist philosophy. But originally the country was, uh, most of the people were Buddhist and then Islam came on in the 16th century. So a lot of cultural tradition is really coming from the Buddhism. So the five fingers of the sensuous knowledge is something which cannot, should not be reduced into so-called fragmented nature, like matter or something else, whatever you can, neutron, electron, or whatever you can conceive of. So usually, conception is this, once you try to capture the nature, try to uh, go back to knowledge practices based on a sensual understanding, you also come up with a very interesting innovations, and also you find a way how you can really come out of the modern agriculture. Look at the principles are not very difficult. You don't use any pesticides at all. It's completely you have to stop. Any privacy farmers will never use any um, any any culture, any, 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 any pesticide. And this will too is this that seeds must be kept in the farmer's hand. So that's a political resistance against also the multinational companies. It's very important. It ensure the seed sovereignty which you are in the morning. Vinod was talking about it, and many of us also in South Asia, in the middle of the farmers' movement, the seed is a very important issue. So we are very critical, regis, the intellectual property rights. But very famously, Noyakeshi women farmer, they give a slogan, it's a very interesting slogan. They say, sisters, keep seed in your hand. They don't make a very rhetorical language, anti-imperialist, anti-globalization. They are not you know, doing it that way. They say that once you can conserve the seed at the community level, you are really defeating the globalization and imperialism right at the household level. You are just resistant must start, start from that level. That's why these principles are, 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 are really, really interesting. And then, you know, you learn from the forest. I don't go in detail of those. You can, I'll, I'll share this thing with you later on. And then some of the interesting concepts is this. Agriculture is not the production of cultivated crop. It's a wrong concept. What are you talking about? 
agriculture, or at least ecological agriculture, is the production of the both cultivated and uncultivated space. You, agriculture is an inclusion the art. An art by which you are using a crop norm which you have collected from the forest or collected from the sacred wild. You are using domestic entity and we are left the forest. You are managing the forest at the same time. Because in the future, you may change to another crop. You are using the space for the use, for a immediate need, and you are maintaining the uncultivated space for the generations to come, for the future needs. And then agriculture is not, as I mentioned earlier, is not the food production. You can see this space at the top. You can see there are many different trees. It's a multi-crop system. It's a diverse system of production. Whole land is green. Most of the year it is green, especially in the rainy season also, you see even in some areas where a lot of fish will also be, will start to come, the local fish will start to come. And then here this little kid is picking up the food from the uncultivated space. Just I'll give you one study which I will done. If you just maintain the Noyakishi agriculture or the biodiversity based ecological agriculture, 40% of a rural diet you can cultivate from uncultivated sources. You don't have to cultivate it, it is just available. You know, just hunting and gathering, so has really done it. Many of the forest people have really done it. You know, they are doing it in practice, but we are destroying the forest, we are destroying the uncultivated spaces because we do not nurture this particular notion of agriculture, which is very, very important. So, um, and again, this is how I grew up in the village when I was a little kid. And it's not kind of, you know, I'm just trying to show you uh, my romantic childhood, but it's very important that nature also exists for you, for the enjoyment, for the playful activities. A lot of entities exist. It doesn't exist because they have to be consumed. They exist because you live with it. You are part of the nature. So I'll just quote a very interesting quotation from a farmer in Afsar. He made a very interesting quotation when I was going to uh, make a speech outside. That he made a quotation. Like say, I just translate from, from what he said in Bengali. So we love and live with our plants, insects, stones, rivers, flowers, whether they're useful for us or not, animate or inanimate. Because ecology also includes inanimate nature. Biodiversity doesn't mean, life doesn't mean that there is no inanimate world doesn't exist. We are also animate at the same time. That means we are both at the same time. So, Animate and nature. If you do not teach your child to play with plants, animals, or fishes, or appreciate the simple presence of grasses, birds, or warmth of life, sooner or later, this is a very interesting part of it, sooner or later, you will get a George Bush or Tony Blair in your culture, destroying the world and killing people everywhere, calling it war against terrorism. So, I mean, it's not simply ecological agriculture, it's not simply some kind of agriculture as such. It's also very much embedded in the peasantry's conception of the world, peasantry's way of resisting against what's going on globally as well. So, uh, and then this is a uh, picture of the seeds. Just to give you one, one example, the Bangladesh in the morning was mentioning that we had 15,000, you know, this is the official figure, 15,000 different varieties of rice. That's a small country, 50,000, 55,000 square miles. Uh, so, Noyakishi farming, practices can maintain at least 300, uh, 3,000 varieties of rice. So we maintain 3,000 varieties of rice through the Noyakishi movement, through the farm and seed system. You can see that, especially the farmer leader here. And when you work on the seed, we don't need to talk about women separately in the community. We need to talk about women for other anti-patriarchal movements, say for example. Because you have to fight against patriarchy. It's a different uh, relations of power. But when you are talking about a conserving sea, regenerating sea, you're already implicitly by its very design, you are ensuring the leadership of the woman. Because the woman nurtures, woman maintains, and there's a profoundly deep knowledge in sea conservation. So all these 3,000 varieties, you can see 3,000 varieties of life, most of them can easily identify different varieties just by looking into the color 
out of putting it just beneath the tip or just taking it out and just testing. There is a tremendous amount of knowledge by which the taxonomy of the classification of the different seeds by that season, the way they have to be cultivated, when they have to be harvested, what is their productivity, not only in terms of the you know, rice they produce, also in terms of the uh, fodder they produce. It's very important that we don't cultivate rice only for the consumption of the human being, because rice is also used, straw is used for the fodder um, as well. Okay, so that's it's very important that you know uh, the, the Noyakishi movement is led uh, by the farmer. Okay. So, uh, and then this is also very quickly to give you some of the varieties of the rice, which as well we have, when I say that the knowledge practice of the farmer, so we have done detailed research. I have, five, how many much minutes I have? Okay, I'll, I'll okay. So all, the, 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 the farmers, have, all the different varieties of the rice, they really have it is that they have uh, done the detailed research of it. It's uh, done mainly by the farmers. So if you go to the mainstream, let's say, what you call the national agriculture systems, or IRISA, for example, or Bari, Bangladesh Research Institute, they don't have any research of the local variety. So most of the time, you'll see the mainstream would argue that local varieties does not produce enough food. This is a complete lie. This is totally nonsense. Because the farmers does not produce only for the quantitative increase of the, 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 the food, that means the rice, they produce for, for many different reasons. Especially rice for the old people, rice for the younger children, rice for the marriage ceremony, rice for the other kinds of social ceremony. So all the different rice varieties have the particular social needs which they produce and they actually satisfy those kinds of needs. Now there are also farmers are quite well aware different ecological system where the productivity can be quite high. So we have demonstrated showing you this average Noyakishi farming system, just if you go with the rice only, excluding that 40% of the food which you can cultivate from uncultivated sources. Only if you go with the rice then you can see that their productivity is not less than you know four to four and a half ton per hectare compared to the um, two and a half to three and a half ton per hectare by the modern sector. So this is, I'm giving you uh, the, the, the kind of official figure on that. Now the single productivity, which I call the productivity based on the single plant is one thing, but there is a difference in productivity based on the system ill. The when there is an ecological system, every household is an ecological system, every village is an ecological system. If you calculate it based on the ecological system, then productivity is very high. So, this kind of conception, which I call the economistic conception of productivity calculation, that the modern um, uh, agriculture system calculate is basically flawed because the methodology is really flawed. Right? They don't, they don't actually calculate the system yield um, of agriculture. And uh, so this is very simple seed hearts. You can have a look into it. The way we maintain those, just the way in the rural area they maintain those, and these are the different art garden pots which they use for, uh, for maintaining the... Okay. So, okay. Now, when I, so all I have discussed to you um, till now is obviously based on politics, not simply based on some ecological tactics. As I mentioned the seed, as I mentioned the defending the ecology, defending the rural community is part of the politics. But obviously the form of politics which you are familiar with, so Nayakishi farming movement is very much involved in it as well. So this is a demonstration of the city and the GMO. This is like the Syngenta company. And also we quite frequently um, do these kinds of you know, demonstrations in the city so that we can educate uh, the city people, especially against the role of the multinational companies. So we uh, do this kind of policy advocacy. So there is a quite a frequent demonstrations and also many other policy discussions as well. So I'll go there. Yeah, so I'll go back into this and summarizing some of the points where in terms of the politics what that really means. That we address the vulnerability of the all life forms. So this is what Noyakishi focuses immediately. That you have to address the immediate vulnerability, that's very, very important. 
Second point is this we resist all kind of erosion, rapid erosion. And then it's erosion when it's talk about, you know, talking about the erosion of the diversity, the seed are getting lost. We, are, we, we also resist erosion of language. So I have not, cannot speak with you in my own language. It also is disadvantage. Is this anglophonic culture which is dominating the whole world is a disadvantage because it is also erodes the knowledge system which are always embedded in the um, local languages. So we challenge it, you know, a couple of paradigms. Modernity is one, that we think that modern life is a good life, which we definitely challenge it. We challenge the concept of technology, the technology is going to solve our problem. We uh, challenge the market and obviously the state, and then of course we release the violence and the war because ecology is again for the peace building here. So uh, and these are, you know, the strategies is again we, as I'm discussing about developing new languages, new discourses, so I'll not get into it, I'll just uh, go into the uh, 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 with a with simple, uh, with the local language we say it and finish it. We use the what we call the Shahaj way. We don't use the word ecology. Shahaj means that your ability to develop all your faculties together. So the present culture, whether you call modern, modern, industrial, whatever European, whatever you say, I think what the issue moment focuses is that we are scoping. We